What's up everybody? I'm Cushy, and in this video, we're going to be answering the age-old question, what game should you play next? Today, we're going to be looking at Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice. So we'll be going over what this game is about, the good things and the bad things about this game, and if this game will be right for you. And I wanted to play a little clip of the trailer for Hellblade 2 because this really hyped me up for this game. Hellblade is a dark action adventure game with some horror aspects, which takes influences from Norse mythology. As you follow the main character, Senua, as she travels through the depths of hell to save her husband from Hela, the goddess of death. On the way, you solve different puzzles, fight waves of enemies, and defeat mini bosses to get there. And all of this is tied together by the fact that throughout the whole story, Senua is dealing with psychosis, giving an interesting take on mental illness. From the multiple voices talking in Senua's head to the hallucinations and delusions all throughout her journey, it really makes you as a player empathize with Senua. And so this is the first thing that I really liked about this game. You really get to put yourself in Senua's shoes. All the voices in Senua's head does an amazing job at flooding you with all the emotions that she's feeling throughout the story. Not only do the voices make you empathize with her, but it's also used to immerse you into the world and direct gameplay. Focus. Look closer. Look. Use your eyes. Why is she looking closer? She needs to look closer. Focus. I can see one. Hold it in your mind's eye. While you play it, there is no HUD throughout the whole gameplay. There's no mini map to tell you where to go, no objective markers, and this really makes you pay attention to the environments around you and let you focus on the voices that tell you where to go. And this is one of those games where you have to play with headphones on. Right from the start of the game, you get that binaural audio with voices coming at different directions, at different sound levels, all with different emotions that Senua is feeling, which will definitely give you some shivers down your spine. It's kind of like listening to some ASMR, but in a more frightening way, really making you feel like someone's talking inside your head. So along with the story, there are two main elements to the gameplay. And these things sometimes conflict. There are puzzle elements, which help you traverse through the level, and combat scenarios where you fight waves of enemies as you finish those puzzles. As a player, you're probably going to lean towards liking either one or the other. The puzzle elements in the game are definitely the focus, with the combat being more of a side objective to change the pace of the game. And so separately, the combat and the puzzles are really good by themselves. I'm one of those people that favor the combat a little bit more than the puzzles, but I found most of the puzzles to be pretty interesting with some unique mechanics. Some mechanics had you use force perspective to build pathways, others had you look into portals to reveal certain parts of the levels, other levels changed as you progress, make you navigate through fire, and one of the cooler ones was traversing through different patches of light, which acted as safe zones as an enemy lurked in the dark and would eventually kill you if you remain there too long. The best thing was that all these mechanics were tied in perfectly to the story and the mini bosses that ruled that area. The combat, being a side piece, was surprisingly simple with a basic light and heavy attack with dodging and parry abilities. There's basically only four enemy types, which are all notably different and have different attacks. And I really got some God of War 4 vibes. I think with the Norse mythology and similar attack patterns and indicators, Hellblade was kind of like a simplified version of God of War's combat. Another cool concept was that since you don't have a health bar, as you go down you have this recovery time where you can get back up and start fighting again. And I think this played in perfectly with Senua's psychosis and the very forgiving permadeath system that's mentioned at the start. And again, I wanted to mention the voices inside Senua's head, which also helps you with combat as well. 
They tell you when enemies are low on health, or if enemies are gonna attack you from behind. I think the one element that I didn't like was how enemies are invulnerable at one point until you use this ability called Focus, which the voices inside your head just continually say to focus. And like I mentioned before, you're either gonna like the puzzles or the combat more than the other. Because it's such a drastic change in gameplay, you might be dreading certain parts of the game. If you can't find a certain solution to a puzzle, you might just have to look online. The puzzles that I liked the least were finding these multiple symbols around the environment to open doors. This was a cool concept at first because these symbols could be found by uh, looking at a shadow a certain way or lining up some debris, but eventually it got old pretty quickly. If you're not into the combat that much, you might find that dying a lot is really a pain point because of that looming fear of the permadeath. And my advice is to just change the difficulty. If it'll make you enjoy the game a lot more, then go for it. Alright, so on to if this game is right for you. As always, we'll be using Bartle's test of player types, which basically just separates gamers into why they play certain video games. So first up are the explorers, with all the puzzle elements and all the different but unique environments and mechanics throughout the game. Hellblade is definitely tailored to you. For someone who doesn't play a lot of puzzle games, I found solving a puzzle actually pretty satisfying, and each of these mechanics ties in perfectly to the story. With that, for Hellblade, I'll give an explorer rating of 10 out of 10. Next player type are all you killers out there. The combat in Hellblade is simple but satisfying. Even though there's not much depth to the combat, it's not supposed to be the forefront of the game, but the boss fights that you do go through are top notch. All have interesting mechanics that are reinforced throughout the level design, and again, plays perfectly with the story. So with that, I'll give a killer rating of 8 out of 10. Next player type are for all of you achievers out there. For the most part, this is a pretty easy platinum, with the ability to beat the game in 8 hours, giving you 9 gold trophies and an easy plat. All trophies are attainable, with the exception being the runes that you have to collect throughout the story, which are missable, but are easily tracked with the rune table encountered all throughout the story. A cool thing is that all the runes that you collect give you some lore explaining even more of the story. Other than that, there's basically nothing else to collect. So with that, I'll give an achiever rating of 5 out of 10. Finally, the last player type are the socializers, and there's no social aspects to this game, so this is a 0 out of 10. To wrap this up, I really feel like this is a game that everyone should at least play a part of. This is probably the best game that portrays psychosis through a really effective manner using audio to really make you feel how Senua is feeling. You may have to slug through certain parts of the gameplay, but with the story and the parts that you will like about the game, I think the benefits really do outweigh the cons. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope this helped you make a decision if you were going to play this game or not. So if you're interested or have any more questions about the game, let me know in the comment section down below. And if you found any of this useful, please drop a like. Again, thank you for watching, hope to catch you in the next one, and peace.